Hello everyone, and welcome to the first devlog for my untitled game. I mean, it's technically the second video, but the last one was just catching you up to speed with the project, so you get the point. Also, I just want to start off with a big thanks to all the people who subscribed and liked my last video. That has been a huge motivation when working on my game since the last video went live. So, in the last video, I wasn't really sure where to go next with my game, but I finally decided that it's probably best that I flesh out the core mechanics of the game before I start expanding with more content. So, that's what I've been doing. I figured I'd rather have a stronger foundation than a weak one, so I've been basically just working on player combat and player movement for the past week and a bit. I'm actually quite surprised with how much work I got done in the last week and a bit. I thought this video was going to be like, maybe a month away, but I had all this list of things to go through. I got it done in like a week and a half, so that's good. Anyways, without further ado, I have a bit to cover, so let's start off with some player movement changes. So the first thing I did was completely reprogram the way the player's current state is handled. What I mean by this is the system that handles what the player is currently doing and what they are allowed to do while performing their current action. An example of this is while the player is dodging, they can't be attacking. Before I redid the system, it was just super unoptimized and held together by spaghetti code. Plus, it didn't even register what the player was actually doing half the time. So I figured that the system should be gutted. I switched to a new system that only updates the player's state at the end of an action rather than checking each frame if they are performing an action. Not only did this improve performance, but I found sometimes you'd get weird cases where you would swing your sword, but then the game never thought that you actually stopped swinging your sword. So moments like that should be gone, which will allow for the controlling of the player to just feel a lot smoother. And while I was updating the state system, I added some more states to the game to liven up the player's animations. It's pretty basic, but the player now puts their weapon away after a few seconds of not attacking. It wasn't really that necessary in addition, however, I was already trying to make the state system more fluid, so I just decided to make the player a tad more lively. Once I was happy with the player's new animations, I wanted to add in some humanoid enemies that could also use the new animations. Plus, humanoid enemies like bandits were something that I plan on making for a while now. Given how modular I made the player's animations and mesh, I could easily just use the main character as a base, but then just swap the clothes out to keep the player and the enemies as the same, unspecified humanoid thing. I don't want my characters in my game to be human, but rather just a representation of something humanoid. Once I had the basic humanoid enemies animating, I needed to give them some better AI and not just the same as what the slimes had. This required a small expansion of the AI systems, which I think was worth it in the end. The new AI systems can now be used by all enemies, and supports things like backing up and enemies waiting between attacks. Plus, I also got rid of some of the spaghetti code that was plaguing the system as well, so now your CPU won't be crying as loud when there's more than four enemies on screen. This is obviously an over-exaggeration, but you get the point. Once I hooked up the bandit's AI, I made two new outfits for the bandit to wear. Since my game had a few outfits and armor sets, I worked on adding a defense system to the game. Before, outfits and armors that the player would wear had no impact on gameplay, but now they do. It works by subtracting the outfit's defense value from the incoming damage, then it checks if the incoming damage is lower than 1. If it is lower than 1, then the player will just take 1 point of damage, no matter what. This makes it so strong armors will basically nullify a weak attack to nearly a scratch. For damage calculation, most games use a division system. However, I sort of limited myself by setting the player's health to an integer. This is because integers don't allow decimal points. But because I set it to an integer, it just allows for easier balancing, as I am using solid numbers. Now that I had a working armor system, plus some new outfits and armors, I needed to make enemies drop the new armors, and that required another system rework. There are some gameplay elements that I made with the original Dungeon Crawler game in mind. The original concept I had for armors was that the player could only have one outfit in their inventory at any given point in time. This means they were limited to the outfit that they had on, but then they could swap it with one that they had found on the ground, or drop from an enemy. I felt that this system doesn't really suit my game anymore, as the point of the game is making profits from valuable items. This means I had to rework some fundamental code for my inventory, but now the player can hold as many armors as they want. From here, I also added the new outfits into the game's crafting system, which I already had built long before the last video. I never mentioned it, but I have a simple crafting system in the game that works very similarly to the one found in Terraria. 
In the future, I definitely want to add unique effects to the armors and outfits to make each one stand out in its own way. Now that I've covered the things that I actually had written down, I want to cover some of the things that popped up while testing combat. When I was testing my game, I noticed I had leveled up three times afterwards. Although this was intended, I realized my game was lacking in lots of visual feedback, so I quickly added a level up effect that pops up whenever you reach the next level. This got me thinking more about visual feedback. I also realized that my game never really communicated which objects could be interacted with, so I figured I could implement an outline system that highlights things like enemies when you mouse over them. After doing some research on how this could be done, I realized I sucked at coding shaders, so I caved in and got a free asset from the Unity Asset Store. I don't usually use other people's assets, however I think a simple outline shader is worth the time saved in the long run. Gameplay wise, it's a pretty basic effect, but I feel like it does add to the combat of the game. I have many more visual effects that I added to the game, however I don't think that they're really that necessary to cover. That being said, I think the combat overhaul is basically done. I'm actually pretty happy with the way the combat feels now. The new animations and visual feedback add to the overall feel of the game, and the AI and armor improvements add to a much stronger foundation than what I had before. What I think combat needs now is just more enemies to fight and loot to collect, rather than fundamental feature additions, which I'm really happy about. I feel like I'm approaching the point where most of my core features are done, and the game really just needs story and content now. The only real other improvements that I could think about are just a shop overhaul and an expansion on the NPC system that I have. My game has some features, like the NPC system, that I'm still just hiding. I think I'll only show them off when the game's in a much more complete state. I'm actually pretty happy with how much work I got done in the past week and a half, given that I also have high school to focus on as well. I think the next devlog will be much more art and world design focused, as the game world is pretty barren right now. Plus the core systems are just much more solid to build the content off of now too. Anyways, thanks for watching my devlog, and I'll see you in the next one.